Hey, what's up? This is uh, Real Talk with DC coming to you today um, just to give you some thoughts on uh, what's going on in our community and in the country. I uh, want to talk about two main things today. One is the census 2020 that's going on right now. Now, I just want to give you some thoughts about that. And then also, I want to talk about the fact that they're talking about opening up the city again, uh, opening up the country and what that um, really means to, to me and what it looks like and things that you should be thinking about, uh, because it's just not safe out there right now. And uh, there's more than enough information out there for us to know this. But people are so desperate to get back to work to companies are so desperate to get the economy moving again that they are willing to leverage and sacrifice anything to do it. And it's an experiment for them when they talk about they're looking at the statistics to designate whether or not uh, they should go back or uh whether they should open up like the city or the country and and things like that. You have to understand what that really means. That means that there are people that they are willing to sacrifice for the sake of getting this country back moving again, meaning that a life is not worth more than making money or getting the country moving again. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's get to this 2020 census. Hey, if you didn't know, there's the census is done every 10 years. Right. And the implications of the census is that um, the funding for communities are designated by the number of people in that particular community. Um, the type of programs, the type of money that's accessible to that community in those cities are directly related to the number of people that are in the city. Um, even the number of candidates that you have that can speak for you is designated by the number of people in a particular community or a particular area. Uh, even more so than that, funding for school districts, um, how they set up the school districts, how they district um, the, the, the county and city lines, the, the jurisdictions all of that is designated by the number of people, how many people are in this specific area. And I understand um, just by studying and talking to many people that in our black communities, we are the most undercounted community in the world. And then we wonder why there's no funding available, that there are people that um, are homeless or dealing with very um, specific issues uh, where a little bit of funding will help and there's no money around and we have to scramble around and try to get with all of these organizations to try to to help give us support well it's because we are not being counted it's because they don't have an accurate count so that they can allocate uh, a good amount of funds to support the community, given the density, the economic situation uh, and other things that are going on. And so we go underserved with poorly managed schools, not enough funding for our school districts, not enough uh, money um, flowing to the city uh, to create programs for the community. Um, businesses don't come to our area because they don't even know how many people are there that they could serve. It, census has a lot of implications. So I just want to educate you a little bit. One with the census, they are not trying to get in your business. So if you have, and, and this has been a main issue. If you have two people on your occupancy permit, this is not like section eight. They are not coming to to say that if you have too many people in your house, you're going to lose your Section 8, your funding or whatever it is that you have going on. They do not care about that. They don't count your house. They count your the people in your house, but they don't document the people in your specific house. They just use that number in a general geographical area to say there are this many people in that geographical area. So the number of people in your house, whether it's two or 10, we need to know that those people need to be counted, not because they're designated to your address. 
but because they're designated in your area, in your city, and it allows people to know what what the community is. For small cities, do you know that the taxes are designated? There's a pool of taxes in many cases, and the number of people in your community designates how big of a piece of that tax pie you get to run your city. And so for every person that's not counted, it's I think the estimate is like one thousand three hundred dollars that uh, that the city misses out on monthly because a person is not counted. I don't know about you, but I could use a thousand three hundred dollars. I could use a thousand three hundred dollars. I would love to have a thousand three hundred dollars more in the city for programs and things that we want to do. But we have to be counted for that. Um, so they they don't get in your business. They they count your they count each individual in the household just as a marker to know how many people are in the community. And um, there there is no information out there where they can look at a map and see, oh, this person with this occupancy permit is supposed to have this. And so this is wrong that they, they don't do that. So uh, we only have a little bit of time left. Um, you need to get on this census thing. You can you can get on the census online. Uh, you can put your information in. It only takes a few minutes uh, to document the people in your house. Uh, if you need some help with the census, you can go online and go to uh, my census 2020 and uh, it'll give you information. It'll give you a phone number to call. Um, so that you can be responsible and make sure that you're counted. If for no other reason, make sure you're counted for your children. Make sure you're counted for your neighbors so that when it comes to funding for your city and your local area, you get the appropriate amount of funds designated to you. I'm I'm tired of us uh, struggling and being underserved and, and other uh, under finance because we just did not speak up and that's not a good enough excuse. Um, being fearful of um, somebody finding out some of your personal information is not a good enough reason um, to not be counted when the ramifications of you not being counted. You'll be the you you'll be the one or no people in your community that need help. And you would have been the reason why those funds are not available because you didn't get you weren't counted and you didn't make sure that your family was counted appropriately. All right, let's switch gears. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about the city opening up. You know, I've been hearing about the coronavirus for a long time. And uh, yeah, I know it's a bad thing. Uh, It's a pandemic. You know, it's affecting our community in a great way. And we can't really do anything about it. It's here. It's happening. It's, you know, it's impacting us on a day to day basis. Um, But, you know, it's an awesome thing. We are some of the most adaptive people in the world. Uh, When things happen, we find a way to maneuver around it or get through it successfully. Not that it's not impacting people, maybe even impacting people that we know, but um, that survival instinct in us will have us to make the adjustments necessary so we can survive. Um, So I'm not as concerned about the coronavirus right now because it's here and it's present. What I'm more focused on is how do I survive now? And how am I going to be responsible based on the information that's out there, knowing that there is a disease uh, that's going around that can be carried for up to 14 days without any symptoms being shown. And there's the potential for during that 14 days, that person exposing other people to it without even knowing they have it themselves. <clears throat> for me, that's a scary proposition. That means that I could have bumped into somebody 14 days ago that had it and didn't know it wasn't showing signs and passed it along to me. And I'm in my 14 day cycle. They figure out they got it. I never knew that they had it. And all of a sudden, a couple of days later, I start showing signs or symptoms. That's a scary proposition. That means that 
you know, people are walking around here and, and, and don't even know what, what they're carrying. And and so by the time we find out, by the time we start to see the ramifications or the impact of it, it's already spread or multiplied out exponentially because of all the people that were touched by that one person for that that period of time before they were showing signs without proper testing being available um, and the hospitals and, and clinics are just starting to get the capacity to be able to test people as they come. Um, it's just a too dangerous a proposition to to look at the potential of opening up the city. The exposure is too high. The risk is too high of exposure out there when they don't have enough testing. Now, it would be different if they had enough testing so everybody could go get tested and we could isolate the people who are carrying the gene and, and act appropriately. But that's not the case. They haven't even gotten to that level of control. And so um, I hate to say it, but I anticipate a spike once the city is open because people are so desperate to get outside. They're so desperate to get back to the to what was normal, which we will never get back to what was normal. But they're so desperate to get back to what's normal. They're willing to risk anything and everything. Some people don't even believe that the disease is real. And I can tell you there are hundreds of people in the morgue today because the the virus is real and people are uh, in jeopardy, no matter whether you're young or old, if you have any pre-existing conditions, if you have any respiratory issues, you are more susceptible to succumbing to the disease than, than most other people. If you are over the age of 65, you are more susceptible uh, because your immune system is weak. If you have any autoimmune system uh, issues, you are more susceptible to succumbing to what this disease is doing to you because of how it attacks the body. So when it comes to to listening to people talk about opening up the city, uh, I, I just don't agree with people saying that, you know, we we believe that we have it under control. We believe that the line is flattening. That means that people are still dying and you still don't have it under control, but you're willing to open up the city because you're trying to get the economy moving. That means that whoever succumbs to the to the disease is not important. Their lives are not important because the economy is the most important thing that's going on. Uh, I don't agree with that. Um, wash your hands for 20 seconds. Sud your hands up to make sure that it's getting the dirt and the disease off of your off of your hands. Wear a mask. There are plenty of people out there that are providing masks, that are selling masks, that are giving masks away free. Make sure you don't go outside without a mask. Keep social distancing. Stay at least six feet away from people. You know, I know you want to want to get booed up and want to hug up and all of that, but it's not time for that right now. We if we weather the storm for the next 30 to 60 days, then we can come out in a position where we um, we create less exposure and we don't relapse and go into a situation where we have to stay at home from work again and things like that. And don't look at the fact that they're opening up the city as an indication that it is safe. They're opening up the city because they they want revenue start to start moving again. They they want um, money to start flowing again because they're fearful of the businesses that are out there that are losing money because. But. I don't care. No business is worth uh, the exposure of my life. So govern yourselves accordingly. You know, make sure that you understand what the risks are when you go out. If you have issues with your job pressuring you to come back to work, there are organizations that you can contact that you can let know that you're being pressured to go back to work. Or if you lose your job because you refuse to go back to work because of fear of what this disease is doing and fear of exposure, there are programs out there and and organizations out there that will advocate for you in those situations, Um, will get you um, unemployment uh, and more money and unemployment than what you may have, um, originally been entitled to because of what this situation is. Um, so let's be responsible. Don't take it for granted that it's safe to be out there and, uh, man, be safe. 
Um, once again, this is Real Talk with DC. Just wanted to put some things out there. I talked about the census 2020. Talked about the city opening up. And uh, I'm going to get out of here. But remember, tune in, subscribe, and comment uh, as I put out more information. And uh, until next time, God bless.